Hello! Ciao. Welcome. No, no, ciao, ciao, not ciao. What no, is hello in Icelandic? Spent two weeks in Iceland, we don't even know how to say hello. Just we, say, hello. We just said hello to people. Yeah, they speak English there. It makes it way less likely that you'll actually learn the language when they speak English. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Iceland. We were literally just there for two weeks. Yes. Like uh, three weeks ago. And we were there two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was there the year before that and the year before that. So, uh, Iceland, it's a country that we enjoy. Doesn't really have much. No. It's kind of boring. Yeah, I don't know why I went there four times in a row. I just hate it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if you go there, if you go to places a bunch of times, you hate them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I love Iceland. Probably my favorite country I've ever been to. I haven't been to a ton of countries, but Iceland's gotta be the favorite right now. I've been to 23 countries. Probably my favorite country that I've been to. It's just beautiful. It's got the... It's, there's nowhere like it, so it's hard. It's almost hard to compare it to other mm -hmm. countries. Yeah, yeah. Because it's literally just like its own thing, so unique. There's things that you can do there that you can't do anywhere else. But uh, let's see the overview of Iceland right mm -hmm. here, right now from uh, Geography Now. Yes. If you enjoy the video, subscribe, like the video. We just jump all over the world, react to a bunch of different things from a bunch of different countries, just kind of soaking in, learning about all these different cultures, like, foods. Or like sponges. Places we want to travel. And Iceland have traveled, need to learn mm -hmm. more about it, yeah. and we'll definitely go back. So uh, let's do it. Here we go. You know, I went to Iceland earlier this year, and in all honesty, if you just want to get a real taste of Iceland better than I could ever provide, check out my friend, this guy, Auskir. Subscribe to his channel. He helped me out when I was there. Check he out knows our vlogs. Iceland. Mm -hmm. Auskir, check out the Aus. Yeah, keep that one, bro. All for you. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, Fish. I'm your host Barbie. So full disclosure before we start, my pronunciation for Icelandic words is gonna suck so bad in this episode. <laughs> I, I, I do not advise you to play a drinking game Huffin? for every time I mispronounce Huffin? something. You will get alcohol Huffieri? poisoning and you might die. I repeat, <laughs> you could die watching this. Kalfafell. Yeah, yeah, Iceland! We... Just the name invokes an obvious clue about where it is geographically. First of all, the country is located on at the, the confluence of the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans east of Greenland and just south of the Arctic Circle. The country is divided into six constituencies, three big ones, and three of which are confusing because they basically just split up the most populous areas in the west. Reykjavik <laughs> is the capital and the northernmost capital in the world, which is split into two constituencies, north and south, whereas the southwest constituency is divided into four non-contiguous exclaves, <laughs> but they still Weird. act as one constituency, that, not four. So it's Six small separate entities that act as three constituencies. Get it? <laughs> No. Great! This was done to help with the imbalance of the sparsely populated outer regions with voting since about a third of the entire country is located in the Reykjavik metropolitan area. Yeah, look at that. I guess it's like the West Fjord city, Isafjord mm -hmm. Uh, you got like double city, mm -hmm. Ekalusir, Selfoss? Yeah. And... Aki area, Aki. the north area. And what is this one? I don't know. Oh, it's probably that one... Decent size. Is that that? Is that that one with Hard Walk Cafe? Oh, it might be. I don't remember what that was called. But it might be. It was kind of on the ocean mm -hmm. in this area. Yeah. Hard Walk yeah, Cafe. A bit up from the road, and then yeah. Bergarns. Over oh there. yeah, Bergarns. And our cranes. Nonetheless, most of the country still refers to areas being located in the traditional eight region zones, which are divided like this. The country has many domestic airports, but the one large scale international airport is Keflavik, Keflavik International, and the next two busiest ones are Reykjavik. We walked and from there! Reykjavik and Akureyri are domestic airports except for seasonal service to Greenland internationally. Iceland's domain is mostly encompassed around the main island, however, they do own some smaller islands and archipelagos off their coasts. Mm. The most populated ones being Heime, Hrise, and Grimse, and some in the south, like the newest island that just popped up in the 60s, Surtsey, oh. which is off limits to anyone except permitted scientists who study it. Otherwise, Iceland may be rugged, but the islanders sure have paved a way for you to see it all. The Ring Road. This guy takes you all around the entire country, and depending on how much time you want to stop and see the sights, it could take you anywhere between four-ish to seven days to complete. Hey, Brandon, you went on the Ring Road, right? Yeah. How long did it take you? 
Uh, about nine days. Okay, uh, maybe my facts were wrong. Otherwise, some top notable man-made sites and landmarks yeah. might include the that. National Gallery, the Viking World Museum, the stone carvings of Paul Guzmanson, the U.S. Navy D3 plane wreckage site, the <laughs> hidden Viking Village, the Sea Monster Museum, pretty much all of Akureyri, the Whale Museum, the Penis Design Museum. Center, all over the countryside you can find turf houses with grass on their yes. roofs, the country's iconic landmark and beautifully constructed icicle-shaped church, hidden mm. Now, as interesting <laughs> as those man-made sites and landmarks may be, they pale in comparison to what the actual he land say the has to museum. offer. Let's jump into the fire and ice. All right, let me just put it this way. Iceland doesn't need an amusement park or roller coasters because the entire island is just like a wonderland in itself. First of all, Iceland is the 18th largest island in the world and the second largest in all of Europe. The entire country lies transected on the Mid-Atlantic Range, which divides the North American tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, splitting open about two centimeters every year. You can even see the divide for yourself with your own eyes. Nearby Reykjavik mm -hmm. at Thing... The, with the largest natural lake... Thing Valir, Thing that was not good. The land splits open and you can literally walk from Eurasia to North America. <gasps> Underneath the waters, you can get even closer to the divide at the Silfra, whew, that was awesome. known that. as the uh -huh. clearest water diving spot in the world where visibility Jeez. can go up to 100 meters. Over 80% of the country is mountainous with the tallest point, Kvandalsnukur. 11% of the country is covered with six main glaciers, the largest one in the southeast, Vatnajökull, and the smallest one, which just erupted in 2010, Eyjafjallajökull. With hundreds of volcanoes and about 30 of them are consistently active as the longest River the Fjordsau meanders through the deep central Hofskulruf <laughs> glacier to the ocean. <laughs> so basically, the entire island is geothermal. Everywhere you go, chances are you can probably find a natural hot spring hidden somewhere in the remote wilderness. Not only that, but Iceland also harbors and capitalizes off of this unique, valuable resource as much as possible. When the first Vikings came in, they were like, Wow, it is cold in here. I mean, I knew Norway was chilly, but dang! Is there anything here we can use to not, like, freeze to death? Hmm. Yeah, they killed a lot of sheep and made more wool clothing, but then eventually they found out how to generate power at the hot springs. Geothermal energy provides about a quarter of the country's power alone, and the rest is mostly hydroelectric from dams and renewable sources. Nonetheless, only about 1% of their land is arable, mostly confined to the south peripheral lowlands where root vegetables and kale and cabbage and cauliflower oh, are grown, alongside numerous geothermal heated greenhouses that harvest warm climate produce, like tomatoes, cucumbers, and yes, even bananas, making Iceland the northernmost banana producing country in the world. World. Of course, what? the country also hosts a unique we variety got of bananas. Yeah, yeah, they were hard. Yeah, they were hard. Narwhals, and the national animals, narwhals. the Griff Falcon, and the famous highly accredited Icelandic horses. By the way, yes, it's true, Iceland is the only country with no mosquitoes. However, they do have two species of midges. <laughs> He said midge. Midge is, which are similar to mosquitoes. And actually, one of the species does actually bite, so it's kind of like having mosquitoes anyway. <laughs> Iceland has biting midges. Keith, just... <sighs> Speaking of which, traditional Icelandic food is... Let's just say even my Icelandic friend said mm. this. This is so disgusting. Why <laughs> would anyone eat this? Yeah, let's just say the Vikings had some very unorthodox tactics when it came to food preservation. Dishes like sheep's head, stockfish mm, yeah. jerky, head cheese, sheep testicles, and the famous oh. haukar. What is it exactly? Well, let's just say... Hey, so I uh, got the shark, but it's poisonous. Uh, how do I eat it? Hmm. Oh, I know. Let's bury it into the ground until it smells like urine, then dry it out for a couple months, and then cut off the brown crust, and then serve it. Yeah, obviously. Jump, 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 jump. There are some delicious <laughs> redeeming Icelandic foods, though. They are known for making some amazing smoke lamb served with bean salad and grilled haddock and herring dishes. You can literally drink almost any water from any stream, pond, or lake, or river in we Iceland. Get that. The whole kind of acts like a filtration device for the glaciers. You have places like the smooth conical Kyr we, we climbed! We, climbed it. we climbed it! We were on top of that mountain! Oh, what a cool hike. It was very cool. Fell Mountain. Brandon has a tattoo of that. <gasps> the Skafta cool. Crystal Ice Cave in Vatnajökull. The Kjolur Trail in the Highlands. Literally like every five kilometers you'll find a waterfall. And don't forget the geysers mm -hmm. in the south. Pretty much all the West Fjords region is empty and beautiful for you to explore mm. with no tourists. The sea monster of Kvitserkurdogmi no Island. <laughs> Griot Giau Caves. Mayfell Green we Volcano on Black Sand Beaches. Krafla and Naumskarth. Drangsnes Hot Tubs. The largest hot spring. Knukver. And the open exposed fossils of... If you went against my disclaimer and played that drinking game, you should be in an ambulance by now. Speaking of <laughs> drinking, Icelanders are awesome people to socialize with. Let's meet them, shall we? Man, 
wasn't social. Now, if the Nordics no, were a family, we Iceland would be like the little brother that got lost at sea from a shipwreck, got stranded on an island, and became a wild man. First of all, Iceland has a population of about 335,000 people and is the most sparsely populated country in Europe. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Icelandic, about 4% are Polish, and the remainder are Polish. other immigrants from all over, mostly we Nordic, West Italian, European, and, and a few Asians yeah. mixed in as well. They also use the Polish. Icelandic kroner as their currency, they use the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, being Icelandic is actually very unique genetically in contrast to the rest of their Nordic cousins. Basically, way back yeehaw, the Vikings were like, Hey, we're sick of Norway. Let's make a new home. Oh, but wait. We need women. But most of the Norwegian women were like, uh -uh. So they made a quick stop to the British Isles and kidnapped a bunch of Irish and Celtic women and brought them over. About 70% of all their women, that is. To this day, oh, a typical oh. Icelander actually has a portion of Irish or Celtic roots in their blood. Now, obviously, if you are one of the few lucky people that hasn't ended up in an ambulance yet, you'll have noticed that the Icelandic language is incredibly unique, often touted as one of the hardest languages in the world to learn. I mean, half the time, the letters make no sense. F can make a V or a P sound. Sometimes P and a T make a F sound. Sometimes the G makes makes a w sound. These two letters both make a th sound, and sometimes when there's two L's, it makes like a h sound. Most Nordic peoples have a hard time cracking the Icelandic code, except for the Faroese people on the Faroe Islands. They seem to have a similar sense of pronunciation and grammar as the Icelanders. Icelandic and Faroese are the closest languages to ancient Norse out of all the Nordic languages. If you give them a script written in ancient Norse, chances are they could probably understand it. Whereas Norwegians, Swedes, and Danes are like, ha! Nope. Now, because of its small population, Icelandic culture is very communal. Chances are everybody either knows each other or they know somebody who knows another person. Therefore, an ingrained sense of trust kind of roots itself in the mindsets of most people. This is why Iceland has one of the lowest crime rates in the entire world, sometimes topping Dude, off at number one. And also, as of 2014, they were elected the world's most peaceful country according to the Global Peace Index. Oh, and by the way, in Iceland, nobody technically has a surname. They just adopt the last name dependent on their father's first name. And they just add son or daughter Gunner, after. Gunner, so for example, Gunner, a man named Yes. Alex with a father named, I don't know, Bjarki would be named Alex Bjarkison. Or if it was a woman, her last name would be Bjarki Dotter. Sorry, Bjarki, you just popped in my head. You rock, man. Hope you're doing well. Icelanders are thrill seekers. They live in an extreme landscape, so they make the be best of it and they will ski, paraglide, rappel, yeah. skate, dive, jump, and experience anything that gives them adrenaline. Some of the top notable Icelandic people might include founders of Iceland, Ingolfur Arnarsson and his wife, Hedvig and brother Kjörlif, Leif Eriksson, the first president, Svein Björn. Son, musicians Sigur Ross of Monsters and Men, Emiliana Torini, Moom, Goose Goose, of course the most famous resident Bjork, Bjork Oscar Bjork. nominated director Friedrich Thor Friedrichsen, Hut Thor Laxness, <laughs> handball superstar Olafur Stefansson, Magnus Uren Schiving, Fian Paul, Magnus. and of course everyone's favorite strongman Hapthor or Thor the Mountain, mm, the mountain. Now as small as Iceland is, they've made a he huge impact in the world's media outlets. No, Somewhere in the late wasn't. 90s and early 2000s, word spread fast and to this day, tourism is almost getting out of hand and as they get over yeah. three times their yeah. own population in tourism every year. Yeah, there's Tell some places in Iceland where it's just like so many tourists and you're like, uh, uh, uh. We've been to Iceland multiple times. We've not gone to the Blue Lagoon. Nope. There's, there's a lot of places that are like, we just don't go to because it's so touristy. We try and get away from all that. Yeah. 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 Too many, too many people. They should lock it down. Only let us in. Only us. To be built, staff need to be hired, and diplomacy is key in operating the whole deal. Which brings us to... Who's their friend? Now, Iceland has a problem. A good problem. Too many people like him now, and it's all happening too fast. First of all, Iceland has always had good ties to the USA and Canada. The US was the first to recognize Iceland as a state after independence, and both countries not only give some of the biggest business, but also house the largest communities of Icelanders outside of Iceland. Mm -hmm. Finland is like the mysterious, cool, new rebel friend that they just made. They enjoy both being outsiders because although they are both Nordic, they are not considered Scandinavian. When it comes to humor, they so totally rude. get each other and click instantly with dry, sad my dark undertone jokes. Sweden is like the older brother that they love, but is too busy working on his flow charts to hang out with. Denmark is close, although Danes practically have no idea what skiing is, considering their flat landscape. Most Icelanders learn Danish in school first before they learn English, even though they think really? it's pretty useless. When it comes to their best friends, most Icelanders I've talked to have said Norway and the Faroe Islands. As mentioned before, Icelanders have historical roots to Norway, and the two have had very close relations, especially since they both can relate to being subjugated under the Danes at one point in time. The Faroe Islands are like their weird cousins that totally get them and love to hang out with. It's a magical moment when an Icelander meets a Faroese person. In conclusion, Iceland is a land where cold meets hot, old meets new, small yet big, horrible fermented shark meets your dinner plate. I hope you're still alive, and if you are, stay tuned, because the big guy, India, is coming up India! Next. We reacted to that. We did. Iceland. 
There's a lot of things that we knew in that one, mm -hmm. obviously. The most probably we've known for sure out of any of the other ones. Because yeah. I've been there five times. Yes, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Iceland. Beautiful country. Would recommend anybody going there. Especially if you like hiking. You like nature. Uh, and stuff like that. And if you like good food. Yeah. You have a lot of good stuff. Even though it's expensive, it is crazy. And even though it's super touristy, it's just crazy. It's beautiful. It's great. It's, like I said, unique. It's Iceland. It's Iceland. Only Iceland. <laughs> Where can you get an island that was made by a, an island that's on two continental plates that is pulling apart, but also is covered in glaciers and there's volcanoes under the glaciers erupting into the glaciers making canyons while the glaciers are sliding across the mountains that the volcanoes created and digging all these ridges in them. Iceland. South Dakota? Yeah. North Dakota. Also, Nebraska? He didn't even mention fluffers. Yeah, he didn't say one thing about fluffs. There is like thousands of sheep everywhere and they're yes. super derpy. They're always like... They're like the cutest things ever. They're so fun. And, and then you can honk at them. And he didn't mess, mess, uh, mention skur. He didn't. Skia. 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 I think that's very... It's skur. Scary. Thanks for watching everybody. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Iceland if you were interested in it. And uh, thanks for watching with us. See you later. Subscribe if you enjoy. We're going to do more uh, Europe stuff. Yeah. Oh, we do a lot of Asia. We do some mm -hmm. South America. So we're going to try to get some more Europe in there too. Because I've been, pretty much all the countries I've been to have been in Europe. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff to learn about it. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.